Hello and welcome back or welcome if you're new to my channel. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make a large sign with your Cricut. I'm using the Cricut Maker for this project, but it can also be done with the Explore Air 2 following the same steps and methods. And I don't recommend attempting a sign this big with the Cricut Joy. I'm making a sign for my coffee bar this winter, but of course you can use any design you like. To start out, you're going to need a blank wood canvas for your sign. You can build your own or do like I did and reuse or upcycle another sign. I got this 30 by 17 and a half inch wood sign on mega clearance from Hobby Lobby and I think I paid around $11 for it. I like the quote, but it doesn't match my style. So I bought it with the intention of painting over it. So I just go around the border with some masking tape to protect the frame from getting painted on. And then I start painting with a foam brush and some white acrylic chalk paint by Hello Hobby. I got this paint at Walmart and they replaced the whole Waverly chalk paint line with this brand and I'm not a fan at all. It takes forever to dry and I had to do four coats with this brand and I know Waverly would have covered it in like two or three coats. So I recommend Waverly if you're use, reusing a sign like this and need to cover a large area if you can find that paint. Um, I know at my local Walmarts, they aren't selling the Waverly brand anymore. So here is my blank wood canvas after four coats. It was still wet when I removed the painter's tape and I did have to let it dry completely out overnight and well into the next day because again, this paint takes forever to dry. So while it was drying, I went into Cricut Design Space and started preparing the design to be cut on my machine. In Design Space, I create a new canvas and click the upload button. And I already have the design uploaded into Design Space. And this specific design is from designbundles.net. And this is from the Christmas Design Bundle Volume 1, I believe. But again, use any design you like. The methods in this tutorial can be used for any large sign project. So next I go over to the shapes button on the toolbar and select the square shape. I click the unlock button because I'm going to change the size of the square template to be the same dimensions of my wood blank. So a 30 by 17 and a half inch rectangle. And I change the color to white and this isn't important because the rectangle will be deleted later. I just do it out of habit and because it's the color of my wood blank and it will give me a good idea of what the finished result will look like. Then I right click and send it to the back. So now I can start sizing my design on the rectangle template by just dragging the arrows in the bottom right hand corner of the design. Once I'm happy with the fit, I'm going to go over to the layers panel on the right hand side and start ungrouping this design because the Cricut is not going to be able to cut this design all in one mat because it's bigger than what the machine is capable of cutting, which is 12 by 24 inches or actually 11 and a half by 23 and a half inches. So after I have everything ungrouped, I'm going to start mapping out my cuts and grouping them together in sections or cuts that my machine will be able to cut. So in the layers panel, I'm going to start with the mug and snowflakes on the top and bottom of the mug. So holding down the control button on my keyboard, I'm going to find and select those pieces. And then I'm going to click group and then attach. Clicking the attach button is very important because if you don't, it will scatter your design in the cut mat screen. So now that piece is grouped together, I'm going to work on the next cut. So I select the words Frosties and Snowflake, group and attach those pieces. And next I do the word Cafe and the last little snowflake, again, holding my control button down on my keyboard and selecting them and then group and attach. And now all I have left is the words at the bottom. So I'm going to select all of those words and the little scrolls and then group and attach them together. Now I can go ahead and delete the rectangle template by selecting it and then clicking on the X. And the words at the bottom are going to be longer than the machine is capable of cutting. And on the layers panel, it tells me that. If you hover over this little yellow sign, it says that it's too large and to reduce the image by 11 and a half, by 23 and a half or less. And if you happen to miss this little yellow like warning sign and clicked make it, a pop-up would appear and say basically that it's not supported as well. 
So I have two different options. I can either go back and ungroup those words and regroup them into two different sections, essentially cutting them in half, or I can scale it down a bit. I decide just to scale it down because it's not that big of a difference for me anyways. So now you see that the little yellow sign has disappeared, so I can go ahead and click make it. So now in this screen, a little pop-up shows up at the top and tells me that my images are larger than 11 and a half in width and length and to continue with the larger mat or to cancel and return to the canvas to resize. I have a 12 by 24 mat, so I click OK. And if you only have 12 by 12 mats, I know there is a hack that I've seen done where you can basically tape two 12 by 12 mats together and make a 12 by 24 mat. I personally haven't done that hack myself, but that's just something that I thought I would mention. And I know that there's probably videos on YouTube on how to do that. Also in the screen, it's showing me how my design is going to be cut on the mats and how many mats I'm going to need to load for the project. So even though I had four different group sections that I made, Design Space automatically condenses the design into three cuts because there's room to fit two of those sections I made into one mat, if that makes sense. So then I click continue and then select vinyl as my cut material and begin loading my vinyl onto the mat and into the machine. So I have my 12 by 24 mat out on my desk ready to go. So now I'm just going to take my black vinyl roll and roll it out covering the entire mat. And you can cut it off at the end, but I just leave it on the roll and then cut it after the machine is done cutting. And I highly recommend you use a vinyl roll for large signs like this and not 12 by 12 sheets. Otherwise, you're gonna have to break down the design up into even smaller sections, or it's going to be a struggle when it comes to weeding out the design and applying it to the wood. I'm using Permanent Vinyl by StarCraft. I get it in a huge roll from 143 Vinyl. It's pretty inexpensive, and I don't have a discount code for you because I'm not affiliated with them, but I think Mr. Crafty Pants is. So if you want to head over to his channel sometime and get his discount codes, he has amazing Cricut tutorials on his channels as well. So as you can see, I loaded the mat into the machine for my Cricut to cut, and after you unload the mat, flip it over and peel the mat away from the vinyl instead of pulling the vinyl off the mat. Doing it this way prevents damaging your vinyl. After all of my pieces are cut, I just take my scissors and trim off the excess vinyl and save them with my vinyl scraps for other projects. And then I just begin weeding my designs, basically removing the unwanted pieces of vinyl. And I like to weed from the inside out when it comes to words, especially if they're small like this. So I like to take out the spaces and letters like O's, A's, and like P's, and so on first, because it just helps me identify the letters better when I'm pulling off like the big chunk of vinyl or the perimeter um, so that I don't accidentally pull them up, if that makes sense. Some tips I have for weeding vinyl are to peel large chunks at an angle and try to go with the curves and shapes of the cuts and always have a pair of scissors handy so that you can trim off big pieces when they become too big and unmanageable so that the scraps don't restick to the unweeded parts and then ruin your design. And also just take it slow. I find weeding vinyl to be super relaxing. It's actually one of my favorite things to do. Oh, and have good lighting. <laughs> I'm using a headlamp from Dollar Tree. Now it's time to apply the design to the wood blank and you want to use a light to medium tack transfer tape, especially if you have painted um, your wooden blank. Otherwise, if you use a transfer tape that's super tacky, it's going to actually pull up the paint from your sign. I'm using this medium tack transfer tape also from 143 Vinyl. I like it because it doesn't have a backing that you have to pull off and I just roll it out and use however much I need. To apply my pieces to the transfer tape, I flip them over and press them down onto the transfer tape, and then I use my scraper tool to burnish the vinyl to the transfer tape, and then I peel the backing of the vinyl away from the transfer tape. And when you're pulling off the backing, just go slow, and if any vinyl wants to hang on, just go back and re-scrape it down, and then begin pulling it off again. I'm starting with the bottom piece of the design as a base to kind of center all of the other pieces and I'm just using a regular ruler to center it on each side and then burnish it down to the wood and then slowly peel away the transfer tape. 
And again, if any pieces want to hang on to the transfer tape, just go back and re-scrape it down and then start peeling again. And I use the same method for the rest of the pieces in my design, applying them to the transfer tape and then to the wood on my blank. And it's a good idea to keep the canvas open on Design Space um, with your design so that you can see where each piece is supposed to go and line everything up correctly. You can also use the parchment paper trick to line things up before placing them down. Um, this transfer tape, though, had a light enough tack to where I was able to adjust it without it sticking permanently to the wood before burnishing. So that is it for this tutorial. I hope it was helpful for you and easy to understand. I love how this sign turned out. I'm actually doing a snowflake theme in my dining room this year for Christmas, so I think this sign is perfect for that. And if you like this video, I would love a thumbs up. It helps my channel out a lot. And also don't forget to subscribe before you leave and turn on your notification bell so you never miss an upload from me. Thank you so much for watching and happy crafting.